Unusaku, good afternoon. My name is Savannah Ashton and I'm the Director of Programs at Paututit Inuit Women of Canada and I welcome you to today's launch which I'm extremely excited to be a part of and, and share with you today. Uh, first and foremost, from coast to coast to coast, I'd like to acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis and First Nations that call this land home. To start this launch in a good I'd like who will be opening this event with a few words and she'll light the kuluk. Sophie has been an integral part of this project and we are so grateful to have her here today. Uh, she is joining by phone um, given technical difficulties in the north but uh, thank you Sophie. Thank you. Any yes, thank you, Sophie. Thank you. I'll speak in my language and uh, with a prayer in Inukituk. Utia yoga hangi yuki. Tamatia to allow yuki uvatini te manga hau tamatia. Unnojini tia hasti ka uvati luna kuvi vatiwi. Kuja de vatiwi nyutu vatiwi. ロピネソネトピネソアタトゥムイヒネトゥニヤカミヨカヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨヨ
of the Canadian Cancer so Society for her continued partnership and support for our communities. Today, we are proud to celebrate the work we have accomplished with the Canadian Cancer Society, as well as the launch, launch of uh, e-learning modules. This module was created to equip healthcare providers with the right information to properly support and provide care for Inuit patients and caregivers, as well as provide patients comfort and peace of mind. We recognize the foundation of culturally safe care for Inuit depends on increased understanding by health care providers. This means ensuring health care providers know and understand Inuit history, culture and experience that impact our health journey, including Inuit language and spirituality. Inuit traditional and modern knowledge and the historical context and effects of colon colonization that affect our options and the type of care we receive. We know these e-learning modules will help increase the cultural understanding of healthcare providers, improve communication between providers and patients, ensure more culturally safe and effective treatment, and provide better health outcomes for Inuit. But it is also our hope that these modules inspire, inspire others to commit to culturally safety training. Compared to the rest of Canada, Inuit are young and linguistically and culturally distinct. We are one of the most economically challenged, medically underserved and northern remote populations in the community in the country. A lot of our communities are only accessible by planes. This is true for all health challenges, including cancer. Inuit are two times as likely to have cancer as others in Canada, and the disease is leading cause of death in our communities. There are a number of reasons for high cancer rates and mortality for Inuit, including low cancer literacy and understanding among Inuit. Mistrust and mistrust of and experiences of racism in the healthcare system and lack of access to diagnostic services and treatment in northern and remote communities which cause low or late diagnosis. In 2014, Pauk Tutit and the Canadian Cancer Society formed a partnership to address the growing cancer rates among Inuit. With wisdom and guidance from our nas National Inuit Cancer Advisory Committee, Pauk Tutit and the Canadian Society set out to build health literacy across Inuit Nunangat, increase screening rates, increase and encourage lifestyle changes and develop support for patients and their families. Cancer affects each of us differently, but it does affect all of us. Together we can continue to make commitment to ease the challenges of each Inuit patient and caregiver's cancer journey. Koyanami, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the health of Inuit. Koyanamik, President Kudlu, for those words. I'd now like to welcome Chief Executive Officer Andrea Seal from the Canadian Cancer Society to also say a few words. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you, Rebecca. Unusakut, everyone. My name is Andrea, and I'm the CEO of the Canadian Cancer Society. And I'm coming to you today from the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, Vancouver, British Columbia. I would also like to extend my thanks to Elder Sophie for opening today's meeting uh, with such beautiful words and uh, lighting the kulik. 
thank you also to per President Rebecca Kudlu and the entire team at Pactutit Inuit Women of Canada. Your work really inspires positive change in the lives of Inuit women. And it's because of your passion and vision and dedication that this project came to fruition. I also want to express appreciation for the National Inuit Cancer Advisory Committee members for all the guidance and the insight, and for everybody who's joined us today who have supported the Inuit Cancer Project and are helping to make these new resources possible. It's a huge team effort. We celebrate this partnership with you and all of the progress that's being made through this project. Um, as Rebecca said, the partnership began formally many years ago, and it's through all of these years of collaboration and relationship that we now have a much deeper understanding of the unique Inuit cancer experience. And this understanding allows us at the Cancer Society to better serve the health and well being of Inuit affected by cancer. And it's profoundly important learning for us. These new modules launching today, they're the culmination of uh, years of hard work and consultation and uh, that's happened even through the pandemic, which of course has added so many challenges, but the team has overcome them all together and have brought the resources to life. Finding ways to reduce the fear and the uncertainty of a cancer diagnosis is very integral to our purpose. And so providing the trusted, accessible, culturally safe support is very fundamental to us being able to do our work. And the patient and caregiver e-learning module is going to help Inuit patients through their cancer journey in a way that respects language, culture, and unique experiences. Um, we all know that the cancer journey can be a very long and very difficult road. And for many Inuit living in the Northern regions of Canada, of course, having to travel hundreds of kilometers from home to receive care adds immense challenge, but travel is just one obstacle. And in major cities across Canada, it's nearly impossible to find healthcare providers who understand Inuit culture and can adapt their approach to cancer care. So to help overcome this, it's been very important for us to, to work with Pactuti to create resources that are really specifically designed for Inuit so we can help make life a little bit easier for the Inuit women, families, men experiencing a cancer diagnosis. The other model uh, module that's launching today, the e-learning module for healthcare providers is also very important and is going to have a major impact because we know our healthcare system and healthcare providers must change to serve all people better. Um, the module is designed to support that systemic change and show healthcare providers the historic context that impacts the experiences of Inuit in, in Canada's healthcare system, guide their interactions in a culturally respectful way. And of course, importantly, the module was shaped entirely by Inuit and guided by their experiences. So we hope this training is going to play a major role in better serving Inuit women and their families through the cancer journey. Um, better communications, better understanding between, between patients and the healthcare providers. As Rebecca said, we know that Inuit continue to have worse outcomes from cancer than others in this country, and we have to change this. So by working together, providing these educational resources, we hope to change the future of cancer for Inuit people forever. And now that we've created the resources, of course, we wanna see them used very widely. So I ask everyone on this call to please share the resources among your networks and your communities as we're gonna be doing through all of our networks too. And our work doesn't stop here. The Canadian Cancer Society is committed to collaborating with indigenous communities to support the health and well-being of First Nations and Inuit and Métis peoples. And these, you know, we do this through initiatives to fund uh, life-saving cancer research, create a more inclusive cancer support system, advocate for better health policy for all peoples, and we want to make life better for everyone. So congratulations to everyone uh, who supports the Inuit Cancer Project and has made today possible. A special thank you again to Pactutit Inuit Women of Canada for your passion and perseverance. You're a wonderful partner championing the health and well-being of, of Inuit affected by cancer. Um, we're very honored to be a part of this project with you. And we're especially honored to be doing it launching this week, which is such an amazing week for Inuit women. And to close my remarks, I want to just say two words I learned in the new, mo in the new module, Nakurmik Tima.
Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, our team would now uh, like to acknowledge Dr. Wendy Gifford, a uh, professor, and Catherine Larocq, a PhD student, both of them at the University of Ottawa School of Nursing. This committed team worked with us to inform a resource content on best nursing practices, and they are committed to culturally safe cancer survivorship care across Inuit Nurangat and urban centres. Welcome, Dr. Gifford and Catherine. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you. And thank you, President Kudlu, Elder Sophie, the Advisory Committee, Andrea, and everyone here. I am Wendy Gifford, and I and the team at the University of Ottawa, including Zaina Alaware and Catherine Larocque, who is here with us today, have been involved in the accreditation process of this e-learning module for healthcare providers by the Canadian Nurses Association. So the accreditation process is a long and rigorous process. And for this e-learning module, it involved having both Inuit and non-Inuit registered nurses review the content and delivery of the modules and provide feedback that was then incorporated into them. This process ensures that the final product is culturally safe and reflective of what is meaningful to Inuit and important for all healthcare providers working with Inuit. This module does exactly that. As next steps, and in partnership with Paktutit and the advisory committee, we received funds from the Canadian Institute of Health Research, known as CIHR, to implement all of the cancer resources that have been developed by Paktutit and the um, Canadian Cancer Society to implement them across Inuit Nunagat so that they are in the hands of Inuit and the healthcare providers working with them. This is part of a longer process working together with Inuit to make a difference in healthcare delivery and the processes across the country. I'm now going to let Catherine describe the responses of nursing students who viewed parts of the healthcare provider e-learning module in a university class she was teaching this winter. Catherine? Hello everyone and thank you uh, uh, Wendy for acknowledging everyone. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge first that the land on which I was teaching at the University of Ottawa is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. So Yawako, thank you for having me everyone. Uh, I just wanted to share my experience of sharing the modules with some undergraduate nursing students. The students all overwhelmingly thought that the modules should be incorporated into nursing curriculums moving forward and that they weren't even aware of how little they knew. They greatly appreciated the phrases in Inuktitut and also felt that the modules gave them an excellent opportunity to apply this in practice. The key take home message that I got from my students was that more content like this is needed, that they're gonna spread these modules widely within their networks when they're in clinical placements and with their colleagues in class. And that we'll be pushing forward myself and my students to get these modules included into the curriculum moving forward every year so that our University of Ottawa students are better prepared to take care of the large population of Inuit that we take care of here in Ottawa. So my greatest thanks to Paktuti for allowing us to try these modules with the students and you have an ally in us and we'll be doing everything we can to promote your work. Thank you, miigwech. Thank you so much, Dr. Gifford and Catherine. Uh, for your words, much appreciated. Uh, now we're really excited to share a short video that highlights all of our hard work on Inuusini Akusaktara and includes snapshots of our new e-learning modules. Uh, to give you a bit of context, e-learning has been shown to be an effective way to reach a wide range of people and allow for individuals to learn at their own pace and in different ways. An important part of our approach for the development of these e-learning modules is to use videos of personal stories of Inuit who have experienced cancer um, and a cancer journey of their own. Research shows that people with cancer are far less interested in reading about what they're going through and what to expect, and rather folks would much more appreciate being engaged when they see and hear from someone else with a similar experience. 
So our modules are designed to facilitate online and offline learning to accommodate accessibility within Northern communities. And to overcome the issue of internet accessibility, we are creating offline versions um, of the modules that will be uploaded to USB sticks and shared. While COVID-19 has affected the ways in which Inuit have received their cancer information, we do hope that these e-modules are even more timely and we hope they will help to partly alleviate this burden. As uh, Andrea and Rebecca explained, the first e-learning module is for Inuit patients and their caregivers to learn about cancer, how to use the existing cancer resources, what to expect through the cancer journey, what to expect when going south for treatment, any mental wellness supports and survivorship resources, and what kind of questions to ask their healthcare team. While the second e-learning module is for healthcare providers, to learn about the unique needs of Inuit and some basic cultural competencies. It includes the historical context of colonization, unresolved trauma and healing centered engagement. There's also sections on Inuit traditional knowledge, language and communication aspects, which Andrea has already learned, which is awesome. As well as how to use and implement our cancer resources with their patients. By no means does this is this meant to capture all, but our e-learning modules are, are meant to encourage and seek out lifelong learning. Now we'll show the video. Imagine finding out you have cancer and then having to travel thousands of kilometers from home to an unfamiliar place, a place where you may not speak the language and you're having complicated medical tests and procedures done and you don't know when you can return home. The unknown can make the cancer journey more difficult. Proud to take Inuit Women of Canada and the Canadian Cancer Society want to make it a little easier. Together, we have created a series of resources called Inuzelnig Akhoksaktara, My Journey to Increase Inuit Knowledge About Cancer, including e-modules developed after years of one-on-one -on -one consultations with healthcare providers, and Inuit who have experienced or cared for someone who experienced cancer. They are modules that draw on real life experiences as well as other Inusilnig Akhoksaktara resources to address common questions, fears, and what to expect as a patient navigating the healthcare system. The patient and caregiver module has been built to answer the questions so many Inuit have and questions you may not have thought about the cancer journey. From helping to communicate patient rights to the importance of screening and initial diagnosis through treatment and even what happens when returning home. The healthcare provider module is designed to teach healthcare providers the historical contacts impacting the experiences of Inuit in Canada's health system and to help guide their interactions in ways that reflect cultural understanding and safety. The Healthcare Provider Module has been accredited by the Canadian Nurses Association and counts toward the required annual healthcare professional development hours. These modules were shaped with Inuit, for Inuit, and their caregivers and healthcare providers supporting them on their journey. They exist to empower Inuit and their families who are experiencing cancer. They exist to build trust and cultural understanding between healthcare providers and their patients to improve treatment and healing. You can help by sharing these resources among your care networks and communities. Together, we can improve the cancer care journey for Inuit. Unasaku, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Raina Marie. I'm the manager of health policy and programs here at Pau Tutti Inuit Women of Canada. Um, personal stories and shared experiences have been instrumental in guiding the project as a whole, especially in the creation of resources. Chelsea Giesel, who is the project lead for the Cancer Project, and myself uh, have the pleasure of sharing some reflections from some of the people who have been so important in this work.
It was an honor and a privilege to participate on the Inui Cancer Project Advisory Committee. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have learned from my fellow advisory community members and heard many incredibly moving stories about cancer journeys. I know that the resources Paukutti has produced will help others along with their cancer journeys. And that memory was from our friend, Nicole Robinson, who is the Director of Northern and Indigenous Health at Healthcare Excellence Canada. And now we'd like to play a positive memory from Melanie Panyak, who lives in Ottawa, who is the voiceover artist for the e-learning modules. Positive memory is that you know there is hope in this big life of cancer. We as people, we need to support and be more educated and let it be known in public that there is a lot of that happening in Nunavut and across Canadian Arctic circles. You know, let it be known and let us be aware and educate us about what the journey of being in a cancer and how it affects the family members and relatives. Hi, uh, thank you, Reina. And I would like to uh, share a memory from Sapora in Oaxaca, um, who previously, before myself, uh, was the lead on the Cancer Project, and she continues to be a really important um, member on the team. I am grateful I was given an opportunity to speak about our Cancer Project. I often started speaking in my own language, Inuktut. I told them the story of my mother who had cancer and had to travel to an urban center for treatment. My mother was unilingual and her healthcare providers were either English or French speakers. She did not understand what she was being told during some of the scariest times of her life. We now have some opportunities to share our Inuit communities understand. I would like to dedicate this project to all the cancer survivors in our Inuit communities and their openness to share their stories. My mother and others with cancer should not be alone during their cancer journey. Their cancer journey is our journey. And next, um, we would like to share a reflection from Tracy Turchetti, who might be the longest standing member of our advisory committee since the partnership between Pakchuti and CCS began. Um, so here she reflects on some of her time on the project. Hi everyone, my name is Tracy Turchetti. I'm the VP of Cancer Information and Policy at the Canadian Cancer Society. And I have a very good fortune of having been involved in this project since the early days. Uh, back when Pautuati created the first ever English and Nuktut Cancer Glossary. Um, you know, I was thrilled to lend a hand uh, to that groundbreaking project and also mildly terrified because I didn't speak a Nuktut and wondered how I could possibly help. Um, you know, as part of that work, I traveled to Nuvik, my very first time in the Arctic. I met an extraordinary group of health professionals, interpreters, community representatives, and elders from across Nunungad who over the course of several days created new culturally appropriate medical terminology in Nuktatut. Brand new words uh, that were accurate and when spoken in a regional dialect were relevant and understandable. And as a lover of words and as an advocate for access to information as a right, contributing to this achievement, even in a very small way, really has been the highlight of my career. And it was the success of that project that really inspired us, CSIS and Pautuati, to continue working together to improve cancer literacy by creating Inuit-specific cancer resources. As part of this work, I had the privilege of traveling with members of the advisory group, including elders Sophie Keelan and Amy Buckin, uh, who were so generous with their stories and insights, uh, their guidance, and, and of course, their humor. Um, you know, we traveled to Calculate about halfway through the project to reflect on lessons learned, um, and plan for the launch of Inusiniaku Saktara on my journey. It was fun and eye-opening to be in Iqaluit and hear from others in the group about the similarities and differences between Eastern Arctic and Western Arctic, the shape of the land, the people, the culture, you know, differences and nuances that I'm still learning about 
Uh, and that is not generally well understood outside of the Arctic. Um, so to do this work in Nunavut, surrounded by the people and experiences and stories that inspire us to serve them, really felt like a gift to me and continues to inspire me um, uh, to do this work now and in the future. So thank you, Pactuity. Thank you, fellow members of the advisory group. Thank you all who have been involved with this project. It's been such a gift. Nakurmink. And uh, finally, it's my pleasure to read a memory from our friend, Elder Sophie Keelan. My reflection on this cancer project was meaningful and it was a successful project in general. The information is cultural, true, and reflects the wisdom of telling personal stories of an individual's experience. It brings genuine meaning to the claim that only our stories of the past can make us heal. To everyone who has interest in our experiences of our cancer journey through life, I salute to you, Paututi, and to those who've shared their knowledge in this project, even if it highlights our differences. As people of this harsh country, let us observe, learn, listen, come together. In these times, the world is changing. The need for speaking out has come. The knowledge and wisdom of those who are gone and passed on will never be forgotten. It is a learning tool for generations to come. Thank you, Pauktuti, Canadian Cancer Society, and everyone involved in this lifetime project. It is not the end of this project. New beginnings will emerge as life goes on. How true your words are, Sophie. Koyana Meek, this is not the end. And Pauktuti remains committed to advocating for improved testing, diagnosis, culturally safe care, and survivorship for Inuit patients. Um, we know how Canadians receive and access care is changing, and that much is obvious from the recent pandemic. Remote and virtual services and support in Northern communities require much more further development and investment, and ensuring those remote services are positive, culturally safe, and truly supportive for communities means exploring relevant technologies, exploring best practices, and new and emerging programs. The re positive response we received, uh, as Catherine explained, from testing the healthcare provider e-learning module with the University of Ottawa nursing students strongly supports the need to include modules like these into academic curricula and ongoing professional learning. We hope to continue developing similar resources to improve the relationship between healthcare providers and, and their patients. Work will also continue on completing our patient and caregiver e-learning module in Inuktut, a delay that was impacted by COVID-19. This is also not the end of our, of our partnerships with the Canadian Cancer Society, the University of Ottawa, and the National Advisory Committee. As Wendy mentioned, we are so excited to continue our work with an implementation strategy funded by CIHR in implementing our, our resources and new e-learning modules across Inuit Nunungat and, and urban centers. So in, in closing, I, I do want to acknowledge and thank local, regional and territorial partners and everyone who's contributed and committed to this work over the years and, and all of you for attending today's, today's event. Um, I would also like to thank Pukdudit and Canadian Cancer Society staff for their efforts and hard work in organizing this launch. And with gratitude, I invite Sophie to close our event. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Sophie Keelan. Sophie Gerard Keelan. I am honored and humbled to have been given the opportunity to be part of this special event opening ceremony. A little bit about myself. I'm a cancer survivor. Three quarters of my life I was committed and dedicated to have worked for medical services. Started interpreting at the age of 16 in Makovic, Labrador. Worked in five different communities and regions and at an outpost camp. I've engaged, I've enjoyed working with advisory committees since 1990s. 
a very special heartfelt appreciation to both to the Inuit Group of Canada, <clears throat> Partnership Canadian Cancer Society, and all the resources groups. I salute you, uh, all the people who shared their knowledge. As people Inuit, we learn by observations. The resources will be an excellent learning tool for generations, cultural, true, and reflect the wisdom of groups involved. And as for holy gliding is important as special ceremonies, at special ceremonies, it's unique. Our ancestors used it as a tool for survival, for cooking, baking, also for drying the clothes in winter. It's also, it's been used for cult centuries. Thank you, 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 uh, Rebecca Kalluk, President of Women's Group of Canada and people I've worked in, uh, in and traveled with. Knowledge and wisdom of continuation is important. Have a very pleasant and resource, resourceful future meetings and enjoy life. God bless you all. Nakukmi. Um, Sophie. Thank you, everyone. And the closing prayer is what, when do I do it? Please go ahead, Sophie. Closing prayer. I'll do it in English. Heavenly Father, we give you honor and glorify your name. We thank you for all that you have created, wisdom among your people, whomever, uh, wherever they are, might be. Your plans and your blessings are great. Please guide and guard your people, especially people in need, those who are suffering from COVID-19 pandemic around the world, and residential school survivors and their relatives of all the children burials that were discovered. May they find peace and understanding. We also pray for Mary Simon, our new, newly Governor General, give her strength and wisdom. God bless all students in their journey. Let everyone in workplace, every direction, protect us. We humble before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Koyanamik, <clears throat> Sophie, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us today.